should be rolling. We're going to do uh, some of these Lake City machine gun brass cases. Um, these have stretched um, because of where they've been fired and uh, we're going to uh, show you how to trim them with a quick way using the uh, Lee lock stud and uh, case gauge trimmer. Um, when you check the overall length or the trim length of a case, well, that one's showing 2.020. That wouldn't be terribly long. I think the trim two is usually about 0.15, or that's what I normally would use, or something just under that. I'm going to size that case. When you're sizing the um, machine gun brass, or you know stuff that's military surplus, take a white piece of paper and look back in behind there after you load that shell or press it into the die you want to make sure there's no gap of light right here see if you just adjust your press forgot to lose the inside of that neck guess you saw that by the way a little Lyman neck brush that comes with some mica throw that mica away and just use some RCBS case lube on that brush mount it somewhere on your bench and uh, use that to lube the inside of the neck. If you just set your die up to touch like this, you run the ram all the way up and you screw the die down to touch the uh, um, top of the shell holder there. Once you get that press under a load with the shell in it, that does not always close this gap then. And uh, you can actually have a little, and I do. I, don't, I doubt you can see that. Bring the camera in a little closer and see if that'll show that gap that we now have between the shell holder and the base of the die. It wasn't there without the case in there. How do you get rid of that? You're going to just screw this die down about maybe an eighth of a turn and check it again. And I've got, you probably can't see it, but I can see just a tiny sliver there. Um, I'm going to turn it down again. There it is. I can feel that. It is fully closed right there. In that case, it's fully sized. And it had been 020. Once you full length size, they usually grow a little bit. Now it's 026. They usually grow five or six thousandths of an inch. Um, got this off of the lube pad. I'm going to lube the inside of the case neck. Let's see what this one gauges too. That's 016, 2.016. These are 308 brass cases, by the way. And we're going to see what it does. Some of these machine gun cases, I like to double ram them into that full length sizing die. It went from 016 here to 021. So they're growing about five thousandths of an inch. So when you go to trim one of these, um, you know, you need to size them to see what their actual length is going to be, full length sized. And uh, trim them back to, I don't know, some people go 2.005, I think that's a little short, but um, 2.015 is good. I believe I've got this thing I've trimmed on the end of this Lee case length uh, gauge to the point that it's uh, going to cut this to about a 2.012 uh, and that fits kind of tight uh, some of these case length gauges some of the older ones I think they kind of assumed you were going to gauge the or trim the case before you sized it but that's not really a good thing to do that's monotonous as you see that's laborious what I'm doing here with my hands plus it's hard to get that back out of there after you have um, actually sized that thing. So here's what I do. I'm going to grab this case gauge with the cutter with those vice grips. And I'm going to grab this lock stud, I think they call it, with these other small vice grips. Putting the jaw up there, I'm sorry, putting the opening on the lock stud up there where the um, top of the vice grips meet. Now I can just wiggle that out and it's not a problem. Power. Power is a good thing. 
you want it, that little Lee zip trim thing, if you, if you have bought one of those, you found out what a joke it is. Um, don't buy the Lee zip trim that you would mount this in. Also, Lee does make a big wooden ball that you can hold this by. But look, this, this vice grip works a whole lot better on just the standard uh, case gauge um, and cutter there. This is going to spin around. I'm going to run this down in there. You see them pigtails of brass coming off? And I got that out. That's not a problem. You pull it straight out of there. And um, I have, and probably should have found out where it is there before we started the video. A chamfer tool, You're just going to chamfer inside of the neck slightly, and then the outside. I don't like to chamfer outside too much. If you ever got in a situation where the brass stretched and you didn't notice it, um, if you have this case mouth sharpened too much, you're going to increase the chances that that's going to cram into the end of the chamber and, and, and cramp your bullet. Uh, what normally will happen if you have a, if a case that's just way too long for the chamber, the case mouth will bump into the end of the chamber and you end up with what I call a little muffin top right here on top of the case body just before the shoulder and um, I, I may be uh, I may insert a picture of a muffin topped case from having been too long okay so that's got that one then just spin that just like that it's real easy and we're going to um, let's see this one is sized got it ready just lock it down around that spin that you don't even have to really tighten it the centrifugal force will keep it tight um, as you spin your drill motor there and then just push that down in there that's got it a little bit of inside chamfer a little bit of outside and that one's done all right let's size two or three more right quick just to show a little more and you'll get better at doing it and where you want to have your pliers set at um, as you do more of this but if you do it this way um, this really uh, you know it comes it's a faster process if you're doing a lot of this military brass and um, so there's three I'm gonna go ahead and do these just drop it in there and spin that just tight enough to snug it because like I said the centrifugal force with these pliers on that thing is gonna keep it tight See that brass coming off? That's got him. Inside, just a couple turns and then outside. A couple turns. You actually saw that loosen up and then retighten in that particular step, and it will do that. And, uh, let's do just a. Did we size these? No, I didn't. All right. We'll go ahead and size two more of these and we'll trim these. Again, make sure you're really getting that sized well. Once you get this Lake City or other uh, military surplus brass about where you want it, it won't give you too much trouble. Okay, that one's ready to cut. Don't run your drill too fast. A couple reasons it'll get out of control on you. The other reason is you don't want this case neck getting too hot from the from this uh, being pressed into it. As a matter of fact, you should probably, after you've done these cases this way, you should probably check concentricity and um, make sure that you haven't pulled the neck offline there. Uh, make sure you don't have a crooked case is what I'm saying uh, because once you run that down in there a little bit of heat on that neck it could in some cases make it a little crooked and if that's the case run it back through the dial one more time I 
don't know what could be easier as far as trimming brass than what you've just seen here. These are, I, I kind of liked these vice grip um, pliers with the uh, like needle nose. It gives me something to grab out here. You don't have to have that. Probably work just fine, just standard vice grips, but that's what I had and that's what I wound up using. These baby vice grips, they're cheap. A couple of dollars at Advance or AutoZone. You'll probably find them at Lowe's. Um, anyway, that gives you a little lever to work this thing with and um, keeps you from having to struggle to get that loose. And um, I guess that's about it. Hope you enjoyed and um, we'll see you next time. BangSteel.com